Hi, this is Elizabeth Jones and welcome to IDL 7140 LMS and Evaluations. We are coming into week five of our evaluations of D2L Brightspace and today we're looking at how to create an accessible web page using the built-in HTML editor within the D2L platform. So we are going to start by coming up to the top uh, navbar and selecting content. And then we're going to come down to the bottom here to add a module and we will just give it accessibility and HTML editor and we will hit return and that will bring up our new module and we will come here and select new the drop down and we are going to create a file and now we have our HTML editor in here and there's a lot of accessibility within the HTML editors so we're going to peruse some of them um, right now you can look at really easily the headings under paragraph that will give you uh, a major heading and subheadings and these are important to help screen readers differentiate between sections within your um, within your content the next thing I want to talk about are hyperlinks. So you can always copy and paste a URL that's going to create a hyperlink automatically, but it might be confusing for a screen reader. So instead, what you want to do is come to insert quick link, select that, and then you're going to come down to URL right here and select it. And you are going to copy in the URL that you want. I'm just going to type in YouTube video right here and leave it on new window and select insert and now you have a YouTube video URL that is inserted that will be um, easier for a screen reader to differentiate and it will actually if it is reading it it will tell you to open it in a new window now the next thing we're going to look at is alternative text and this is something that you want to add to images now um, it helps a screen reader and it helps users who may have problems with, with visual information. And when you're adding alternative text, it should indicate the content of the image. It should be short, only a few words, and it shouldn't be represent, repetitive. So you don't want to label it with information that's already within the visual, the visual text for the image. So to add alternative text, first you want to place a cursor where you want to add an image. You are going to select the um, the location of the image. So I'm going to come to my computer and give me just a moment. I'll be right back. I'm going to add a picture of my dog Bailey. Okay, so now I have added the image of my dog here, the file anyway. I'm going to select add and you will see this alternative text window pops up. So for alternative text, my dog Bailey. All right, now if this information or this image is purely decorative, you can just select this. This image is decorative and it's not gonna add, because the picture of my dog Bailey, I guess depending on the content, is it gonna add anything to, to the lecture or the information? I don't know, maybe we're evaluating something about a dog. But for this case, it's probably just decorative and I'm gonna select okay and I'm going to go ahead and just create a new file within it. And then my dog's image is gonna pop up. Oh my goodness, that is huge. Let's get a good view of this sweet puppy. All right, he was taking a nap. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at or just briefly touch on are lists. And, and the only thing that you need to know about lists is they need to be bulleted or numbered so that they are easier to see the information and people can scroll through it easier. Also, when you're talking about color and contrast, you know, you have the availability to, to change the different colors and such. You need contrast and you need to, you know, say you want something to stand out. You don't want within black text to maybe put green or red or just do green and red text. You don't want to use color alone. It's important at that time, I said I'd come back to the bold, to use bolding or underlining or alternative means of marking to make sure that the information stands out. You also want to make sure that you select a background and font colors that have stark contrast. So if you have a white background, maybe a, selecting a very dark uh, color to contrast against that. You don't want to input a lot of patterns that can be, be visually distracting. So you will hit save and you will have your selected font color that you want. And you can come up since we've got a white background here. 
I'm gonna put Bailey the dog and you can easily see that but if you want it to stand out again for accessibility you can bold that if you want to make it larger you can come over here and select the size of it over to the right it's a little further away than it usually is from the information so those are a lot of the accessibility things that you want to look at. I hope this information was helpful. Please come back and join me for another tutorial and have a great day. Thanks for joining me.